Hello, this is Simon from Dazlight and welcome to another exciting video tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at audio and how you can actually make a synchronized light show where you've programmed a scene and that scene is going to follow the music or the BPM of a certain sound coming into your computer or a tap that you're doing with perhaps a keyboard key or a MIDI key and we're even going to look at ways to synchronize your show over MIDI as well. So let's get right in and what I'm going to do first actually is just create a very simple show. I'm not going to use the demo show for this particular example so I'm going to create a new show here. I'm going to patch 8 RGBs. This is a nice quick refresher. So here I'm going to type 8 and click patch. And I'm going to create a very simple scene. I'm going to have step 1 red and then I'm going to have step 2 black. So if I go over to live and if I play my scene, the scene will light up red for one second and then go black for one second. Now imagine I want this to the beat of the music. What you can do, you can right click here, go to triggering and you see we've got time selected at the moment and, there, and here we've got a couple of options. We've got BPM and we've got Pulse. Now what BPM will do is synchronize it to a consistent time, like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What Pulse will do is actually synchronize it to the music Pulse, which means it will only change when it hears a Pulse. So a Pulse isn't consistent, but a BPM is. So if we go BPM, and there are a few different options here. There's step on BPM, scene on BPM, and fade on BPM. Step on BPM will jump to the next step on each beat. Scene on BPM will restart the scene on each beat. So I'll give you an example later with, um, this is great for effects, if you want to synchronize effects to the music. And then we've got fade on BPM. And what fade on BPM is, it will take the fade time into account of the steps and it will automatically try to calculate the fade depending upon the time between two beats. So it's a little bit more advanced, the fade on BPM. So if I start on step on BPM. Okay, so by default, here we go, we got 128 beats per minute. Now you can see this keeps jumping between 128, 120, 0, it's not very consistent. And the reason for this is, is because it's trying to calculate the BPM from the audio input. This is because I've got audio selected here. And here you can select your audio input device. Now at the moment I've got Focusrite Thunderbolt, which is actually the audio interface which my microphone's connected to. So it's actually trying to calculate the BPM from me talking, which obviously is a little bit difficult. But um, you could choose your computer's microphone if you've got the audio input. You could choose a line in. So if you could connect perhaps a, a line out from your DJ mixer into and line input of your laptop and you could synchronize it that way. Or if you're running DJ software or music software on the same computer as does light, you can basically use a virtual audio cable. Um, you, for Windows, you need to download one of these from a website. Um, in fact, it's the same for Mac. Uh, I often use one called Soundflower, and it's basically like a virtual audio driver. And then in your DJ software, you can select Soundflower out. And in Dazlight, you can select Soundflower in. We do have uh, a couple of uh, tutorials, I think, on our Facebook page about this. Um, or you can drop us a message on our forums and we'll show you how to do it. But it's really quite easy once you've got it all set up. And that basically allows you to take the audio out of your DJ software, analyze that within Dazlight, and calculate a BPM. So. This is quite difficult to show you because obviously uh, I'm not talking with a BPM here, but if I did have music playing, this would try to calculate a BPM. Now it's often more accurate with um, like house music and music with a consistent beat. 
Uh, if you have something with more of an irregular beat, it can be a little bit more difficult to calculate the BPM. So in those circumstances, it's often a little bit easier to use one of the other methods. So I'm going to move on now to tap. Now what tap allows you to do is actually tap the BPM just with this button here. So I can go one, two, three, four, and it's calculated the rate at which I'm tapping and it's changing my lights accordingly. Now this might not look exactly in sync to you because of the uh, screen recording software I'm using, but this is a really easy way to get a nice accurate synchronization. And another great thing with this is you can alt and click this tap button, go over to show mode, and now we've got a BPM tap button here, which you could put on your smartphone or tablet. So we could go one, two, three, four, have a nice big button on your smartphone or tablet where you can tap the BPM every now and again and your lights will stay synchronized here. Now if I go back to the live tab, you may have noticed before that there was this third option called time signature and this allows you to tell Dazlight how many times it's going to jump to a new step for each beat. So at the moment we've got one over one, that means it will jump to a new step each time it receives a new beat. If we have one over two, it will jump to a new step each half beat. So if the beat's like this, it's basically going to jump two steps each time you hear a beat. So it's going to go bam, 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 bam. And then if you do one over four, it will be ba da ba da ba da ba da 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 and then, well, you get how the rest works. Uh, this one here, this is half time. So it will go bam, 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 bam. Then if we go over to the third option, so this is BPM by MIDI clock. And personally, when I'm doing discos, this is always the synchronization type I use because it's by far the most accurate. Now, the way MIDI clock works is it can take the BPM through a MIDI input. You do have to be playing music from a device that supports MIDI clock and a device that can send MIDI clock, but basically it allows you to synchronize the music over a MIDI message. Um, if you use a like a Pioneer DJM mixer, I think starting from the DJM 800, um, they have a very accurate sound to light detector inside the mixer and that will send MIDI clock out of the MIDI output. So you need to run a MIDI cable out of the mixer into whatever sound card you've got running on your computer and then Dazlight can read that MIDI message. So if we go over here to preferences. We need to specify the actual device you want to use for MIDI clock. So if I go down to MIDI here and you see we've got various different devices here. So Claret 2 MIDI, this is my audio interface. So if I had a MIDI cable connected to my interface now and connected to a Pioneer DJM mixer or similar, then I could actually synchronize this BPM over MIDI with the mixer and have a really accurate tempo synchronization. This also works for software as well. So for example, I have a Traktor open here from Native Instruments and Traktor sends MIDI clock. So if I just uh, throw in one of the default tracks here, you see we've got this running at 127 BPM. In Traktor, you can go over to the settings here most other DJ software has a similar kind of thing. I know Ableton has one as well. Uh, if you go over to Controller Manager and you basically just need to make sure you've got a generic MIDI controller and in the output port you can select Track to Virtual Output and what this will do is it will send the MIDI clock over a virtual output. So just like we were talking about the virtual audio cable before, you can also get virtual MIDI cables, which allows you to synchronize MIDI between different applications. I'm not going to go into too much depth now on to how to set up a virtual MIDI cable, but we do have tutorials on how to do this. And if you're getting stuck, just drop us a message on our forums and we'll be more than happy to help out with that. So if we head over to output port, we've got this track to virtual output, which is a virtual MIDI cable. Um, we better just make sure MIDI clock's enabled as well. Here we go. 
Okay, and I think I need to have my extended view in Tractor as well. So let me just try and remember how we did this. Okay, here we go. Perfect. And if I start playing this, you see the master clock has gone to 127. I click this play button to start sending the MIDI clock. Now, as you see, Dazlite's not responding because we need to select the correct MIDI input. So if we go to preferences, MIDI, and then select Tractor Virtual Output. Hit OK. And as you see, this has sprung to life and this is now synchronizing with our music. Now, if I just get Tractor up on the screen again, let's say I want to speed this up. So if I go like this, so now we've got this one at 131 or 131.8. And here we go, this is perfectly synced. By the way, even though that says 132, it is synchronized to the nearest two decimal places. It just does um, the rounding for the display here. Let me turn the volume down a bit here so you can hear me a little bit better. And again, if we turn this down to 121 BPM, then this synchronizes to 121. So it's a really nice, accurate way to get your lights to synchronize. So I'm just gonna stop that now. So yeah, a few other ways you can synchronize. So before we were using triggering. And step on BPM. You can also use scene on BPM. So let me give you an example of how this works. So instead of having these two simple steps, let's create a new scene. And this time we're going to add a Knight Rider effect. So we go to Effect. Select the lights here. And we'll add a Knight Rider effect. Let's make it a bit bigger. Yeah, that's looking good. And we only want this to go one way, for example. So we just want it to go like this. Perfect. And I'm going to generate in the scene that I've got selected here. So on the current step, and I'll click generate. Here we have the steps. So if we go to live, so at the moment it's following the time. Now if I right click this, go to triggering, BPM, and scene on BPM, this is basically going to restart the scene each time it receives a new beat. So if we play the music again, Okay, this isn't working so well because I think my effect was perhaps a little bit slow. Let's just try again with a little bit of a quicker effect. Things don't always go to plan here. So if I create a pixel effect, it was a Knight Rider. It was a big Knight Rider, like this. It was going one way. Okay, now let's make this really short. Okay, something like that. So we'll set it so it's roughly the right length. Hit generate. Ah, so we got this in scene four. Then we can go over here, right click, triggering, BPM, scene on BPM. Then we click this. This scene is now going to play in time with the music. And again, you can't really see it here because of my screen recording software, but this affects playing perfectly in time with the music now. So that's basically BPM. The other way you can synchronize to your music is with the pulse. 
And that's this section just down here. So basically what the pulse allows you to do is to jump to a new step each time the volume reaches a certain level. So if I go back to scene one, this was our basic scene where we were just jumping between two steps. I'm going to right click this, I'm going to go to triggering, and instead of BPM I'm going to select pulse this time, and I'm going to go step on pulse. And what this is going to do is, I'll need to select an audio input first, so I'll select my microphone. Okay, so this little thing here shows us how loud the microphone is. And you can see the little signal going up and down. It's not very loud at the moment because I think my microphone is a little bit quiet. And then each time it selects a pulse, this little light will flash as well. And the step will jump to the next one. So this is great for synchronizing stuff which is not at a consistent beat. So maybe you're playing music that's not at a consistent beat or maybe you just want your scene to stop flashing when the music stops because that's the problem with the BPM because it's consistent if the music gets quiet or slows down or stops altogether your lights are just going to continue to go but as you see with this you can see it's kind of following my talking now as I'm talking the scene's changing but then as soon as I stop talking the scene stays black and it stops changing. So pulse is a nice quick way to have a sound to light synchronization. And it's kind of similar to how the automatic sound to light works in a lot of like the DJ hardware controllers. So, you know, like the DMX lighting desks and the inbuilt microphones that you get inside a lighting fixture. These often use pulse mode. And when I'm using pulse mode, I normally keep auto on here. So this will automatically detect the threshold i.e. the volume to trigger a new step. But if you'd rather do it manually, you can click manual here and you can move this little fader up. So obviously now I've moved this fader up high, the volume's not reaching this level and therefore the scene isn't changing. And you can kind of just calibrate it yourself with this little fader here. So they're the different sound to light options. If you've got any further questions on this, feel free to drop us an email or drop us a message on the forum and we'd be happy to explain it to you again. 